To the brother's mic on the left-hand side, do we have any non-Muslims? My name is Joseph. I have two questions to ask. Why all the Muslims men are allowed to marry for four women? And the second one is, how can you prove that Jesus was not crucified? Brother, there's two questions. Brother, are you a Christian? I am. Brother, there's two questions. That why does Islam permit a man to have up to four wives? Why does Islam permit a man to have more than one wife? And second question, how can you prove that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified? That Quran is the only religious book on the face of the earth which says marry only one. You read the Bible, you read the Ramayana, you read the Mahabharata, you read the Veda. No religious book on the face of the earth says marry only one besides the Quran. If you read Ramayana, the Hindu scriptures, the father of Sri Ram, he had more than one wife. If you read Mahabharata, Sri Krishna, how many wives he had? Four? Ten thousand, ten thousand, he had sixteen thousand one hundred and eight wives. So if Sri Krishna can have sixteen thousand one hundred and eight wives, so why can't Muslims have maximum up to four? If you read the Old Testament, it says that Solomon, peace be upon him, had seven hundred wives. Abraham, peace be upon him, had three wives. So Old Testament tells you can marry as many wives as you want. Same as the New Testament says that you should follow Old Testament. So in Hinduism, in Christianity, in Judaism, you can marry as many as you want. It is later on that the church put a restriction that Christians should marry only one. It is later on Rabbi Ben Shemgen Yehuda passed a sign out and say that Jews should marry only one. Otherwise, previously, they used to marry as many as they wished. It is the Indian penal code in India in 1954 that put a restriction and said under the Hindu Special Marriage Act the Hindus should marry only one. But the scriptures put no restrictions. Let's analyze what does the Quran say. Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse number 3 marry women of a choice in twos, threes or fours but if you can't do justice marry only one. This statement if you can't do justice marry only one is only given in the Quran and no other religious scriptures. Let us analyze why does Quran give permission for the Muslim men to marry more than one woman, maximum four. The reason is that by nature, male and female are born in equal proportion. But if you ask any pediatrician, he will tell you, the doctor of the children, that the female child is stronger than the male child in fighting germs and diseases. So you have more deaths among the male children as compared to female children. So in pediatric age itself, the females are more than the males. As life goes on, there is death due to wars, due to alcoholism, due to drug addiction, due to accident. In all these cases, more men are dying as compared to females. So today in the world, there are more females as compared to males. In few countries like India and China, the female population is less than the male population because of female feticide and female infanticide. In India, According to a BBC report, every day more than a thousand fetuses are being aborted after they are identified as females. If you multiply this figure by 365, you get a total of more than a million fetuses are being aborted every year in India after they are identified that they are females. According to the Tamil Nadu government hospital report, out of 10 females born alive, 4 are put to death. If you stop this evil practice of female feticide and female infanticide in India, even in India, the female population will become more than the male population. Even in China, if you stop this evil practice, the female population will become more than the male population. Today, if you analyze, in USA alone, there are 4.7 million females more than males. In UK alone, there are 1.2 million females more than males. In Germany alone, there are 1.6 million females more than males. In Russia alone, there are 10.6 million females more than males. God alone knows that how many females are more than males throughout the world. If I agree with you that one man should only marry one woman, and suppose your sister happens to live in America, or suppose my sister happens to live in USA, and the market is saturated, every man has found a wife for himself, yet there will be 4.7 million females who will not find life partner. And if your sister happens to be one of them, or if my sister happens to be one of the 4.7 million, females who have not found a life partner for themselves, the only option for them is 
that she either marries a man who already has a wife or becomes public property public property such a harsh word it is the most sophisticated word I can use I cannot use a better word you know in America today the statistics tell us on average a man has eight different sexual partners before he settles down with one having mistresses in USA is very common 5 10 20 30 no problem having more than one legal wife it doesn't go down their throat when a woman is a mistress she doesn't get a right she's dishonored she's not treated well in Islam when a woman becomes the second wife she gets the honor she gets a right she's treated well any modest woman if you ask her that would you prefer being a second wife of a man who's already married or become public property they would opt for the first so Islam has given permission for some men to have more than one wife to protect the modesty of the woman coming to your second question is it allowed for ladies to marry four men brother you're asking counter question the time is limited you ask two questions now you're asking a third question are you convinced with the first answer I'm convinced with the first one mashallah so you're convinced okay the brother asked that is a woman allowed to have more than one husband if you do that this problem will be exaggerated I mean, more I mean in Muslims in, in Muslims as it is women are more than men if women marry more than one husband the problem will be exaggerated point number one point number two if a man has more than one wife and if the child is born you can easily identify who is the father who is the mother if a woman has more than one husband and the child is born the DNA is still alone brother let me finish the answer now you ask the question was I interfering was I interrupting yes or no 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 so why are you interrupting after I finish you can ask now I'm a medical doctor. Are you a medical doctor? No. I'm a medical doctor. I know about DNA testing. I'll come to it. Once, if a woman has more than one husband, two husbands, and if a child is born, and if he goes to admit in the school, and if the question, who's your father, she'll have to give two names. <laughs> You're talking about DNA testing. I know about it. DNA testing is recent. Was DNA testing there 50 years back? Was it there? No. It's a new recent discovery, yet it's not 100%. Even if I agree it's 100%, it is now, it wasn't there before. Islam is there since time immemorial. And this is not the only reason. Even if I agree tomorrow it becomes 100% perfect, this is not the only reason. Today science tells us that man is more polygamous in nature as compared to the female. Today science tells us that during menstrual cycle, the female undergoes certain psychological changes. It's not possible for her to do the role of multiple wives but a man doesn't undergo these changes it's possible for him to do a role of multiple husbands today science tells us that if a man has multiple sexual partners and all are faithful there is no problem but if a female has multiple sexual partners and all are faithful there are chances of sexually transmitted diseases to emerge and that disease will go back to the male partner so medically it is not acceptable that a female has multiple partners, but medically and scientifically, it's acceptable that a male can have multiple partners. <laughs> Coming to your second question. Now, how can I prove that Jesus wasn't crucified? Peace be upon him. The Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, 157, they killed him not, neither did they crucify him. It was only made to appear so. So Quran is clear. They killed him not, neither did they crucify him. If I have to prove to... Are you a Christian, brother? I am. If you read the Bible, it's mentioned in the Bible in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38. When people come to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and tell him that, Oh, Master, show us some signs. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, replies, Ye evil and adulterous generation, seek it the after a sign. No sign shall be shown to you except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth brother do you know the story of Jonah 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 I do do you know now Almighty God tells Jonah that go to Nineveh 
Jonah being a prophet of God, he says the people of Nineveh, they will not understand, they will not listen to me. He goes to Joppa. It uses going to Nineveh. So while he's going in the ship, in a boat to Joppa, there's a storm that comes into the sea. This is mentioned in the book of Jonah. Book of Jonah, less than two pages. At that time, there was a superstition that the storm in the sea is due to some person not obeying the commandment of the master. So Jonah, being a prophet of God, he volunteers. I'm the one who is disobeying my master. And at that time, it was a superstition that if you throw the person in the water, the water will become calm. So Jonah volunteers. I am disobeying my master. Throw me overboard. I am asking you the question. When Jonah was thrown overboard, was he dead or alive? Jonah, when he was thrown overboard into the sea, when the storm comes, was Jonah dead or alive? He was alive. 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 Very good. When a person is thrown in the sea, where there is a storm, a person ought to die. Was Jonah dead or alive when he was thrown in the sea? He was alive. Alive. If he dies, no miracle. At storm, a normal person dies. He's alive. It's a miracle. A fish comes and gobbles him up. A fish comes and swallows him up. When the fish swallows him up, was Jonah dead or alive? Alive. Alive. Three days and three nights, the fish takes him around the sea. In the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, Jonah prays to Almighty God. While he was in the belly of the fish, was Jonah dead or alive? Alive. Alive. Alive, alive, alive. The fish vomits him out. Jonah comes onto the shore. Was he dead or alive? Alive. 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 Alive, 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 alive. Miracle of a miracle of a miracle of a miracle. I am asking you the question. When Jesus Christ peace be upon him, according to the Bible, when he was taken down from the cross, he was put in the grave, in the sepulchre. In the sepulchre, was Jesus dead or alive? He was dead. 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 If he is dead, does he fulfill the sign or not? But he was raised to birth. In the sepulchre, in the grave, was he dead or alive? Dead. Dead or alive? Dead. If he was dead, is he fulfilling the prophecy? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, no sign shall be given to you except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. If Jonah was alive, for Jesus Christ to fulfill the prophecy, peace be upon him, he should be dead or alive? Dead or alive, he should be. He should be alive. He should be alive and he was alive. Why do you say he was dead? Are you trying to say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, lied? If you say he was dead, that means you are saying Jesus was a liar, knows Billah. That means Jesus was alive. What has been told to you by the church is wrong. Do you believe in the church or do you believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? But the Bible says Jesus was dead. Where does it say? Give me the reference. I'm not, a, not that much known. By but do you know the sign of Jonah, yes or no? Was Jonah dead or alive in the belly of the fish? He was alive. So Jesus Christ has to be dead or alive in the earth. But why it is not mentioned in the Bible that he was alive in the... It is mentioned. Where does it say he was dead? It was assumed. The Roman soldiers thought he was dead. They poked a spear. They poked a spear, but he was alive. So if you see my video cassette, was Christ crucified? There are umpteen numbers of proofs. I gave you one proof. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not say that, you know, I gave life to the dead, therefore I am a man of God. He put all his eggs in one basket. As Jonah was dead or alive, you are saying Jonah was alive, peace be upon him. So Jesus also, peace be upon him, has to be alive. Why do you say he's dead? Just because the priest told you. So do you believe more in the priest or do you believe in the Bible? I believe in the Bible. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, or the priest? I do believe in Jesus. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, As Jonah was in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. So Jonah was dead or alive? Jonah was alive. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, has to be dead or alive? So the Bible still says he was dead and he raised back to life. Where does the Bible say? I have to find it. But what I'm telling you, Gospel of... Matthew chapter number 12, verse number 38. You know the sign of Jonah, no? I do. That time you are dead or alive? Alive. So when you know the sign of Jonah and you don't know where it is said he's dead, 
you have to follow what is in red letter. There are many things which are mentioned by Paul, which is not part of the sayings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. If you know there is something like a red letter Bible, red letter Bible means whatever Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said is in red ink. If you quote me something in black ink, I will not believe. Why? That is not the word of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Do you give more preference to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, or St. Paul? Jesus Christ. What I'm quoting to you is in red. Gospel of Matthew, noted down. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38. So don't get me a quotation of backing. To prove this wrong, you have to get me a quotation in red ink. That's what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said. I request you to go home, read the Bible, and when you're convinced, inshallah, come to the truth. Thank you.